Being on the social platforms is incredibly important to an author's career, and YouTube is no exception. Creating weekly to daily videos on your YouTube channel is incredibly important for your growth and to build authority inside of the industry. So what should you be producing on a YouTube channel as a new author. Whether or not you are a brand new author or you are highly established, this content is going to be incredibly helpful to you. But there is one thing that new authors should never be posting on YouTube or any social platform that we're going to get to at the end. Let's get into five things that you can be creating as an author to fill up your content on your YouTube channel to grow your community and build your authority. First up is a behind the scenes look at your book. Your readers are here solely and specifically because they love the characters and the world that you created in your story. So you're going to be creating content to take them behind the scenes and learn more about the characters, about the world, about what went on inside of the story. You can do deep dives on specific scenes. We could talk about why a character said this or did that. We can talk about how things were crafted inside of this story to impact the storyline and why it had such a grip on your readers. You're taking a behind the scenes look at your book. So pretend for just a moment with me that you have created a movie and these are the behind the scenes extras on the DVD. You are now creating the behind the scenes look at your story, at your characters, at the world that you built for your readers and you're creating that content for your YouTube channel. Next up is your character profiles. These are deeper looks on the characters you've created inside of your stories. You can show off commissioned character art. You can show off some fan art as long as you're talking to those artists and making sure that you're okay with the collaboration. You can talk all about hair color and eye color, why you describe them this way, why they do these things. We can take a deeper look at their background and their history that impacts the way that they're doing things inside of the story. It can be very visual, so you can have lots of visuals with it. It can be a lot of conversations. It can be answering frequently asked questions, but you want to be doing deep dives on your characters. Start with your main character, start with your love interest, then build out to those side supporting characters, and then build out to your villains from there. You have a wide range of character profiles that you can be doing even from one novel. As long as you have more than one character, you can have more than one video. And this gives them a really good look at characters they know, they love, or they hate to love, or they love to hate inside of your stories and allows them to connect deeper with what you've written. Third is a book tour. And you can actually do this in a number of different videos. You can do one big large book tour video and then break it up into segments where you show off the chapter headers, where you show off the scene dividers, where you show off the front of the book, the back of the book. You can do it in however many segments that you want to extend the life of your content. I recommend doing one normal book tour that's just going to kind of go through an overview of everything, then do breakout videos where you can really get in depth with it. For example, one thing that I did in my debut novel was we created very special chapter headers. Those chapter headers had hidden pictures inside of the graphic. So as people read through the story, they could start to identify some of the images inside of the pretty graphic. I I could then do my book tour where I'm showing off the cover, the alt cover underneath the dust jacket. I can show them what the back and the spine and the front of the cover looks like. I can show them the pages and the artwork on the inside, but then I can do a breakout video where we go more in depth on the chapter headers. It's an overview in the main video and then an in-depth look at it and the process for how we created it in another video. I could even go as far as to pull in other professionals to work with me on these videos. With that in mind, if I were doing something about my chapter headers, I might pull in my artist to have a conversation about why we chose to do this and how she drew it this way and all of those fun things for a behind the scenes look. So book tours are going to be incredibly helpful and you can do the big overarching view of it and then narrow down and be more specific for breakout videos as you're giving them these book tours to show them a little bit more. And while you're on the inside of your book, I highly recommend doing book readings on your YouTube channel. Now, if you are a traditionally published author, you have to make sure that you are getting permission from the copyright holder, your publisher, before you do this. If you you're indie, you're already good to go. And I recommend reading the first chapter of your book. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the entire first chapter. If it's a longer chapter, you can read a section of it, but you want a pretty decent section. You want to be going about 15 to 20 minutes with your reading. And if it's a book that has shorter chapters, maybe you're going to read the first three chapters of this. This is a fantastic way for people to decide if they want to then continue on with the story. And
and pick up a copy for themselves. This also allows it to be read in the author's own voice. You wrote the manuscript. People want to see even more so than an audiobook version of your story. They're going to want to hear the author read it in the way that the author perceives it to be read. This is going to be a great opportunity for you to then read your story. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can actually hold the book and you can read it to them like a story time. What I like to do is do a recording that's kind of like a live stream where I put the digital version, my ebook up on screen so that people can see me while I'm reading it, but it's on screen for them to see as well. That also gives them a good look at what the book is going to look like when they have it in their hands, either in ebook form or physical form. They're going to be able to see the chapter headers, the scene dividers. They're going to be able to see the words on the page, which allows them to connect a little bit more to it, makes them a little more emotionally connected to your story, and we'll hopefully get them to pick up a copy of the book or reread your book or send it to their friends to see. So I always recommend that you are reading at least part of your book on your YouTube channel so that people can get a better feel for it. I always read the first chapter of every single book I have out there so people have access to that so they can hear it, so they can see more about it, so they can hear the names of my characters because especially in the fantasy world we don't know how to pronounce a lot of characters names so that's going to help people out as well. You could even do a spin-off video on pronunciations of names if that's going to be something that's helpful to you, but it's really nice to do a live in-person reading of your stories. Now before we get to that one thing that new authors should never be posting on their YouTube channel, but experienced and established authors should be, let's talk about our final point, which is all about author interviews. You do not want to make your channel just about you on YouTube. You want to be pulling other entities into this. So you have the opportunity to pull a ton of guests onto your YouTube channel. And if you want a video on how to get guests on your YouTube channel or types of guests that you should be getting on your YouTube channel as an author, go ahead and let me know down in the comments and I'll add it to my list of videos to film for you. But you want to be pulling other authors into your YouTube channel who are similar to you, who will have a similar audience to you so that you can share their readers and your readers. You are bringing these other authors in so that your readers can meet them, but those authors will also be bringing their audience to meet you. And you're going to do author interviews. And you can run these in a lot of different ways. We talk a lot about how to do author interviews here on the channel. So if you haven't hit that subscribe and notification bell, now is the time because we're helping you level up in your marketing as an author and making sure that you are making easier work for yourself because interviews are so incredibly easy for you to get content without doing a ton of work. And you're going to bring authors onto your platform to interview about their books. Books that your readers will like to read while they're not busy reading yours, while they're waiting for your next novel to come out and they don't have anything else to read, you're introducing them to authors that they may like to read while they wait for you. Bring these people in and ask them a series of questions. You can come up with 10 questions that you ask everyone, but I highly recommend that you know a little bit about their book. You don't have to read their book, but you have to know a little bit about their book and customize some of those questions to those specific books. You want to make sure that you're bringing on as many authors as possible to build each other up because of rising tide raises all ships. And this is your opportunity to bring in a firm, solid group of other authors that can work together to market. If you bring them in, maybe they will then interview you for their audience as well. Bringing in other people to interview is a great way to, again, save time and effort creating your content because asking questions is not nearly as hard as answering questions. And you just have to bring people in who can talk about their books and you can facilitate that conversation with your audience, creating easy content for you, giving them marketing, and also bringing their audience to meet you as well. If you do have questions about any of that, especially when it comes to interviewing other authors or entities, go ahead and let me know down below because I have lots of playlists, lots of videos on this, but I'm always happy to make more. But let's talk about that one thing you should never be doing as a new author on YouTube and you definitely should be considering doing if you're a highly established author. Okay, now is when you get your pencil and paper out because you need to take notes on this one. It's going to sound a little controversial at first, but it makes all of the sense in the world and it's going to protect your career and other people's careers. So what is this? What is the one thing you should not be putting on your YouTube channel or any social platform as a new author who has less than three published books out in the world, but you should be doing if you are a highly established author who has more than three books out in the world? It's giving writing advice because your very first second or even third novel could be a fluke. The way that you did it might have worked one time, but you don't have proof that it works 
again and again and again. Authors who have more than three books out, who have a strategy and proven results of success, have the ability to give writing advice or to give marketing advice or to give publishing advice because they've done it and they have that proven track record. But nobody should be taking advice from somebody who hasn't done the thing more than once because at any point, it could be a fluke. It could be an accident. Maybe it works and maybe it doesn't, but you don't have that proof to back it up. So as somebody who wants to be reputable in this industry, you should not be giving advice until you have at least three books out and proven results that whatever it is you're doing actually works. You can have thoughts, you can have opinions, but we're not going to voice them publicly because right now you are not a representative of what works and does not work in this industry because you haven't actually done it. And I know it sounds a little controversial because everybody wants to have an opinion and everybody wants to feel like their way is the right way or a way that people can do it, but we don't want to give false information to people. We don't want to give conjecture or possibilities to people that may not end up working after all. The best thing you can do for your own reputation in this industry is to keep those lips zipped until you have proven results with this, which is why we encourage highly established people with over three books in that proven track record to give advice, to help people, to bring all of their knowledge to the table and help the newbies. But if you're new, you are not qualified yet to speak on those things. Stay in your space because we want to make sure we're building up the right side of your industry, your books, your characters, your connection with your audience, and that should not be dependent on helping other people learn how to write when you have not developed that track record yet. So you gotta be incredibly careful not to be giving writing, publishing, writing world advice if you are not qualified to do so yet. And just being an author does not qualify you to do it. Having a track record of success does. So you wanna make sure that you're sticking to what's most important. You don't want your audience's attention divided. You don't want them to be asking you writing questions. You don't want any of that because the second you get into that mind, um, that pitfall of the mind field, that's where I was going, of asking writing questions and publishing questions and questions just about the craft of things, they're never going to pay attention to your books. Your books no longer matter. You're only there to serve the purpose of helping them grow with their own business, their own author brand. You want to keep your focus heavily invested in your books, your characters, your world that you have built, the things that are happening to make you money. Focus on those, build those things up, build your community around that. And when you have that proven track record, they will be ready to eat up your advice to help them grow as well. But it could in the long run cost you a lot of sales if they're super focused on just getting advice on writing from you and not paying attention to your books. I've seen a lot of authors go through it and we don't want to do that to you either. So make sure you keep your focus where it belongs on your books, on your characters, on your work, and we can come with the really great advice later on in your career. YouTube is an incredibly important platform for authors to be on to get your content out there, to grow your authority, and to help the communication and conversation with your audience. We're community building over on YouTube and there's a really great way for you to reach out to your audience to find a new audience and to have those conversations. If you have questions on how to use YouTube, the technical side of things, I have an entire channel dedicated to helping you market on social media with playlists and hundreds of videos on YouTube and YouTube shorts and how you can be leveraging them. It's youtube.com slash KM Robinson, and I'll link that down below for you. Make sure you follow over there because I'm dropping daily videos helping you navigate the world of social media so you can make more money online but spend less time doing it. And you can drop your questions here as well in the author-specific space so we can continue to create videos just like this to you for you to help you level up and make more money inside of your author life. We will see you in our next episode as we're dropping daily videos here on this author publishing channel as well to help you level up in this space, and we will see you in the next episode.